Hello and welcome to The Mill. I am your host, Dusty Crane, and this week I thought I would talk about the five best birds in the Wingspan Oceania expansion. Okay, so that's highly subjective, right? Um, that's the right word for an opinion, right? Uh, in any case, um, you know, this is probably going to be proven wrong over time, but in any case, um, I thought it'd be a fun thing to talk about. And actually, before I get to that, I wanted to talk about if you are seeing this right around the time of it being filmed, which is the 16th of October, it's going to come out on the 17th of October. Um, if you see it right around that time, Jamie has a poll on the Wingspan Facebook group talking about how interested folks would be in a double-sided uh, mat for the game. Um, if you bought one of the, the mats for Wingspan, you may have been a little bummed out at the announcement of a new mat for Oceania, but um, one thing that Jamie mentions in the request is they don't have any plans on messing with the player mat again. They're not going to rule it out, but in any case, there's not going to be anything in future expansions that necessarily are going to make one mat or the other uh, useless anymore. You know, it, it, you're still going to need both mats, and so we're going to want both mats because maybe you don't want to play with Oceania. Maybe you want to do the European expansion and whatever comes next. So that's something that they're taking into consideration. If you are interested in a double sided mat, go ahead and let him know. Uh, there's a survey. Let him know. Also, it's it's how many mats you would be interested in. None, one through five, I think, uh, or six or more even. So if you really want to push that player count, you're free to do so. Now with that out of the way, let's go ahead and talk about what I think are the five best birds of this new expansion. Number one. So this one is one that I think is situational, maybe. I think this is a great one to get, especially if you get it right in your first in your opening hand or it's very early in the feeder, and that is the Masked Lapwing. That bird can be played in the wetlands or the grassland, grasslands. It's either one invertebrate, I'm calling them worms from now on, one worm or a seed. It's a one victory point, can hold a few eggs. Um, but what's really cool about this bird is you reset that when you play it, you reset the bird feeder and you take one of every type of food that is on offer. So this bird has the potential to give you six food. If you end up rolling those dice and get a pollen and, you know, another food source, you can actually take both. Now, you don't, you know, if you roll all worms, you're not getting five or six worms. It's one of each, but you do have the potential for six. So I think this is one that I got um, when I was playing solo. I got it in the very, in my opening hand. It was, it was awesome, except for I ended up rolling. So I don't even get like three food, but still that's a great, uh, a great return when you're only paying one worm and one seed. So that is why the masked lapwing is one of my favorite new birds from this expansion. Number two. Now, number two is actually, I have a group here because they're very similar cards, but they do differ just a little bit, so I wanted to talk about it. And those two birds are the Laughing Kookaburra and the Sacred Kingfisher. Now, both of these birds can be played in any of the habitats. Um, and they also have the same cost, which is a worm, a fish, or a rodent. And they're, the points that they're worth are a little different. The Kingfisher's worth zero, the Kookaburra's worth one, but you can actually hold an extra egg on the Kingfisher. So in the end, at most, these are worth four point birds. Um, but what differentiates them is, this is another thing that I like where you can get food in situations you wouldn't normally. Like I mentioned, you can go ahead and play it in any in any in habitat. So you can have, uh, oh, this is a means to get food in the wetlands and the grasslands. The Kingfisher is a predator bird. So once between turns, uh, when another player plays the gain food action, which is gonna happen plenty, um, you can gain one worm, fish, or rodent from the bird feeder if there is one at the end of their turn. They could go ahead and hate draft you if they only have the one. Um, whereas the Laughing Kookaburra is the same ability to gain a, a worm, a fish, or a rodent, but it is a, when activated, it's a predator power. So you can activate this one as many times as you want to, and hopefully when you reset the bird feeder, you get at least a worm, a fish, or a rodent, which what are the odds you're not going to get that? They're very similar to each other. That's why I kind of played them as a pair. Um, almost essentially the same. I mean, they're both, um, they're both predator birds, but it's a, it's a pink card or a brown card. 
very similar, worth the same points at the end, um, potentially, depending on how many eggs you, you put on there. But um, those two are tied for my number two in no particular order spot. Number three is the Velociraptor of birds, the Southern Cassowary. Now this one is a monster, as you can imagine, because it's a high food cost bird. It's, it's two berries and a, any type of food. You can only play it in the forest, but here's what's really just cool about this is it's a four point bird to begin with, so you are getting something immediately for your investment. Um, don't play this first. This is not one you want to play up front because when you play it, it's a one played, one time opportunity thing, but you disc, you can play it on top of a bird you already have in the forest. And when you put the bird into place, if you did go ahead and remove another bird to do this, you, you play this one down. There's no kind of egg cost. You do have to pay the two berries and a wild food type. But if you do this, you lay four eggs on this bird and gain two berries from the supply. So really, you're playing an eight point bird essentially for a wild of any kind of resource because you're gonna get those two berries you just played back. That is a wild investment and, and, and just crazy thematic. And again, immediately, if you do that worth eight points for essentially a wild food type. So that one, the Southern Cassowary, is gotta be up there as one of the greatest new cards in this expansion. Now, the next one I have is the Rainbow Lorikeet. This is one that is only played in the forest. It has a berry and a nectar food type. It's only worth one victory point and it only holds two eggs, so three point bird in total. But um, this is another bird that helps you gain food. We talk about you know, kind of having synergy in if you can get more than you intend, you know, you're, you are obviously getting food in the forest anyway, but this is another way to discard a nectar and gain, if you do, uh, you gain two food from the bird feeder. Now, here's why I like this. The nectar, you're spending it anyway, although this one actually says discard. Well, you're spending a, a nectar in the food cost of the birds. So you are adding a nectar at least to your, your forest. But you can discard one nectar. This is nice if you're getting towards the end of the round and you're not going to have another purchase. That nectar goes away. So what this does is let you convert one nectar into two other food types that are going to stay with you the whole game if you want them to. So that is, I like that conversion, that ability to, to take this temporary resource and make it a permanent resource. I think that adds a, a nice little puzzle element to when do I play this? Am I going to be able to use this nectar or not? Yes, it's wild, but I can also use these two things that are on offer from the bird feeder. And so that one is right up there with one of my favorite birds, the rainbow lorikeet, right up there with one of my favorite birds in the new expansion. Now this, this last bird, I got a bonus anyway, but this last bird is the one you guys called trash bin bird or something? The bin chicken. The bin chicken. Okay, so the Australian ibis can be played in the wetlands or the grasslands. It's got kind of an expensive cost. It's a worm, a fish, and one of any type of resources worth five victory points and can hold two eggs. So seven victory points at most. But here's its win activated power is really cool because I think this is I think this is the first bird um, that I can remember anyway, that you actually interact with the discard pile. So you shuffle the cards you've already discarded and draw two from it. And then you have a choice to make. You can choose one and tuck it behind the, the bin chicken. Um, or, and then the other one, you add it to your hand. Oh, I'm sorry, no. You choose one and you either tuck it behind the bird or add it to your hand, and then you discard the other. So you get one victory point or... It could end up being an awesome bird you want for later. Maybe you get a raven. Maybe you get one of these other cards that I talked about. Um, so that's just another way to bring more cards into your hand or add to a tucking in engine that you may already have going on in the wetlands or the grasslands. All right, so this the last bird... Actually, I said bonus. So the last couple birds that I have here are actually talking about some of the new yellow cards that we have on offer in the Wingspan Oceania expansion. And the ones that I picked out are, are both uh, one seed to play. One can be played in the grasslands, the other can be played in all three. Um, very similar, two or three victory points. Um, but the game end ability, um, what I thought was cool about this, so the game end ability of both is very similar. It's not identical, but it's similar. Play a bird, 
and this is a game end, remember, play a bird, pay its normal food and egg cost. If it has a win played or a game end power, you may use it. Now there's more than one of these cards, so you could potentially, if you had some food stored up, you could then play Gold's Finch here, which lets you um, go ahead and play a bird, as, as I just read to you. Um, but then let's say you also had the gray-headed mannequin in your hand, this one right here. Um, this one also has a game end power. It says play a bird, pay its normal food cost, but ignore one egg and its egg cost. And it has a win plate or game end power. You may use it. So you could actually, at the end of the game, trigger one, two, three, these game end cards of these win activated uh, abilities. So I think that's super cool. It gives you something else to, maybe you notice that the person sitting across the table from you has a few cards left in their hand and also has a nice cache of food. Are they waiting to surprise you with a few extra points that you maybe you weren't thinking about? Could be. Maybe then you drop that Southern Cassowary, add another eight points to the total. So it has a nice way of kind of making the end game could kind of throw a, a twist at you there, right there at the end. So those two, kind of the same thing. I just wanted to talk about it because it's a new power and they, the, those didn't make my the, the top five most powerful birds. Um, and then the last thing that I really like about this expansion is representative here of this silver eye. And what this one is, uh, can be played in any environment. It's a worm and a nectar. It's worth four points on its own and has the ability to become an eight point bird after its uh, eggs are added to it. But there are quite a few cards that share the same kind of uh, ability here. When activated, all players gain, in this case, one nectar from the supply. But there's quite a few cards in this expansion that actually say, hey, you get this and so does your opponents. You get this and so do the other people. Which, if you don't want to play a cutthroat version of Wingspan, it's nice, especially if you're playing with people that are new to the game or they're uh, maybe you're playing with young kids and you can give them a little something. Um, if, if it's a nice, it's a nice way to make. I mean, not that this is a, a mean game by any right, but let's say you're playing with the, the European expansion. Maybe you took something from someone. Yes, they got something, but maybe they're salty about it. There's also play a card that you give something back and, you know, hey, we're good now, right? Um, so I really like that there are cards in this expansion that allow you to you know, take something but also give something. It is a, it's a nice added feature uh, to be able to do that in the game. So those were my five most favorite birds in this new expansion, along with a few bonuses tossed in along the way. What has you the most excited about the Oceania board? Is it, is it just the new birds? I said Oceania board, I meant Oceania expansion, Oceania expansion. What has you most excited? What are you looking forward to? What do you think of my choices for favorite birds? That is all I have for you this week. Take care of yourselves and each other. Thanks for watching. Bye.